So B is 4P squared times Q squared times rho total proportional to the total density of charge. And this is induced uh, density of charge. Um, therefore, I may write down uh, the electric constant U omega as 1. You see here it's 10 minus, and for induced density we also have minus. So therefore it's plus phi pi E squared over Q squared. Here is 1 over volume, sum over K, sigma n k sigma minus n k minus q sigma divided by epsilon k minus q sigma minus epsilon k. So there was no sigma plus one. So this function is sometimes called polarizability times P <coughs> since it is related to induced charge in the system when we put some external charges it describes as how the medium is polarized due to the presence of these external charges uh, sometimes people call it polarization operator and uh, those who uh, familiar with diagrammatics know that this is just a loop and uh, calculation of this polarization polarizability of medium corresponds to calculation of electron loop and this pi incorporates all dynamic effects so this is a function of Q omega. let's now discuss first of all is it clear so I'm sorry, uh, the uh, derivation is a bit lengthy. However, uh, what we did, we calculated the response function. If I recover here plus and delta, I will get an analytic function. Uh, therefore, it's retarded function, and we will have all properties of response functions which we have discussed, um, uh, well, which we a little bit discussed, discussing magnetism. Um, let's first of all um, consider some obvious properties of this function. First of all, let's take Q equal, let's take omega equal to infinity. Let's take very large omega in, in the um, in the dielectric constant. If omega goes to infinity, clearly uh, this term goes to zero, and then the electric constant u infinity is equal to one, which tells us that there is no screening for large frequency response because large frequency um, corresponds to very short times and uh, the system doesn't have any time to react on the external perturbation. So for short time, there is no screen. So this property is quite obvious. Uh, let's take another limit, namely Q goes to infinity. Um, then again, clearly, that since it's inversely proportional to Q, um, the dielectric constant epsilon infinity omega is also equal to 1. Why? Because, so this is short time or no time to react and uh, large Q means small distances. <coughs> Again, for small distances uh, from charge you don't feel any screen. In order to uh, feel the screening effect, one needs, as you also know from quantum mechanics, go for distances uh, beyond uh, so-called thermosphere radius. And we come to thermosphere radius um, very quickly. So again, we see that there is no screening 
on small on short distances. Let's take Q goes to zero, but omega finite. So then, I will consider P as Q goes to zero omega, which I will take out omega. It's one over omega. And here, instead of summation, uh, you remember that sum over K should be replaced by omega times integral over dk over two pi q in some here. I take out one of omega, I will put one of volume here, and this is sum over k sigma and k minus m k minus q sigma sigma. Uh, 1 plus epsilon k minus q minus epsilon k over omega. So since q goes to 0 and omega does not, <coughs> I can make expansion of this fraction writing it as first term is 1 over omega, 1 over omega, sum over k sigma and k sigma minus and k minus q sigma minus 1 over omega square 1 over omega sum over k sigma and k sigma minus and k minus q sigma times epsilon k minus q minus epsilon k so what do we see from the first term we see that this is zero because I can shift my summation in the second term and the first and second are compensating each other. So in the second, I can write down that epsilon k minus q, of course, is equal to epsilon k minus d epsilon over dk times q. And since the derivative of epsilon with respect to k is a velocity. This is epsilon k minus vk. This is the group velocity times q. <coughs> the same with the n. n now corresponds to a uh, Fermi distribution function. Since I took a matrix element of my density operator, uh, therefore I can expand um, n k taking derivative with the epsilon q, and what I will write down here is minus 1 over omega square, 1 over omega, here sum over k sigma, minus dn over d epsilon k, times u dk square. But we remember, that for Fermi distribution function, which is a step-like function, n is a function of energy, um, here minus dn over d epsilon is almost not <coughs> a function. It's a function which is picked um, in the vicinity of uh, Fermi energy. We discussed it with you several times. Therefore, um, calculating the integral over k is then related to calculation of the integral over epsilon and angles. So I need to integrate angles which are encoded here. So let me be more precise. Um, P, Q, 0 omega is equal to minus 1 over omega square. Instead of uh, writing uh, summation, I will write integration. Integral k square dk over 2 pi q. Integrating over pi angle gives me 2 pi. Integrating over theta is integral from minus 1 to 1 dx uh, q 
um, sorry, it's q v times x square, and then I have delta function epsilon k minus epsilon k, which comes from um, this derivative. And I disregard all temperature dependent effect, effects, so I replace um, uh, my derivative just by um, delta function. And this is also square. So what you see here, that q is of course um, variable we can take out, um, omega square remains here, and all remaining integrations give me a number. For example, integral over x squared uh, from minus 1 to 1 will give me uh, 2 thirds. And then I have a density of states at k. Um, so what I can write down now is expression for the electric constant. Remember that q is stated here that in this limit, epsilon q goes to 0. Omega is equal to 1 minus omega p squared over omega squared, where omega p squared is the plasma frequency. It's 4 pi e squared density of electrons divided by m, where m electrons is equal to a f cube over 3 pi squared. So this is your absorption um, spectra. You see uh, that omega p is nothing but plasma frequency. Um, it is proportional to square root of the density. So for uh, normal metals, um, uh, Fermi energy grows as a density to the power of 2 thirds. Uh, plasma frequency uh, grows as a density uh, to the power uh, 1 half. But for normal metals, um, they are of the same order of magnitude. So what we see um, is um, that omega, if omega is smaller than plasma frequency, then the electric constant is, minus, is negative, uh, while when omega um, is larger than plasma frequency, uh, the electric constant um, is positive. Uh, so this plasma frequency, as I said, which is a function of density metal, uh, defines as reflection coefficient. It defines optical properties. So for metals, um, typical um, uh, omegas for our visible um, uh, light is um, smaller compared to plasma frequency, and this is why metals are so shiny. You see um, that, uh, in principle, we have drawn several conclusions uh, from um, the shape of the electric constant. Conclusion number one is absence of screening at short times. Conclusion number two is absence of screening at short distances. And conclusion number three, is existence of <coughs> plasma um, modes um, in um, your um, in your system. Um, let's take conclusion number four. Namely, let's took the omega equal to zero from the very beginning and see what is the electric constant epsilon u zero is excuse me I wonder that in the limit uh, q and zero because uh, q and omega uh, should relate by uh, the line velocity no uh, not at all so why you have a response function defined for arbitrary q and the arbitrary omega what I'm showing is that limits are not interchangeable you can um, put both of them close to zero but uh, it does uh, matter in which order we do it. Either you take omega equal to zero first, q equal to zero last, or other way around. 
it's function of arbitrary uanomics. It's no more related uh, uh, to any uh, light cone or whatever, because I calculated the response function on some Fourier component of potential. Q and omega are independent variables. I am not um, uh, in the range of, uh, say, electrodynamics, so I'm not discussing uh, any kind of photon, photon effects. I am discussing response function with Q and omega. Which is a measurable function. You can uh, measure um, epsilon in static limit. Static means omega equal to zero integral of all times. Or you can measure dynamic uh, for q equal to zero. Q equal to zero corresponds to integration of all coordinates. This is how uh, you measure your dielectric constant in, the, um, in your uh, sample. But this one, if we do that, what do we have? We have 1 plus 4 pi e squared over q e squared. Um, I again take um, the integral over dk over 2 pi q. But if omega is equal to 0, I may take a change of variables in the second integral. So I can write it twice and k divided by epsilon k minus q minus epsilon k. And k c. And this is the static Linford function which we uh, already discussed um, several times uh, but never derived. And this is what Ganesh uh, will do with you uh, in dimensions 3, 2, and 1 just proceeding with the calculation of this integral, but I remind you uh, the answer is 4p e squared over q squared. Here there is a, oh, let me write it down in other way. It's kappa squared over q squared, and here there is a function 1 half plus 4kf squared minus q squared divided by 8kfq <coughs> logarithm um, q plus 2kf q minus 2kf So this is how static dielectric function um, looks like and if we also take q very small so in the limit q goes to 0 it's 1 plus kappa square divided by q square. So you see that static dielectric function, uniform one in metals, diverges as one over q square. It is infinite. So kappa here, what is kappa? Kappa is inverse radius of Thomas Fermi is equal to square root of a six and with electron density pi e square divided by Fermi. <coughs> so in addition to this formula, namely epsilon q goes to zero, omega not equal to zero, we obtain another formula when q goes to zero but omega already is equal to zero. So in this case, q goes to zero first. In, this, in that case, omega goes to zero first. You see, we got two different results, which actually correspond to two different definitions of response functions. So it's very important which limit you take first, q or omega. And this is very characteristic to Fermi functions. Um, that limits q and omega goes to zero are not commutable. You cannot interchange them. Uh, and taking one or another limit will in principle come to different results. What this result physically means? This result describes you plasmons, um, bosons um, uh, with an energy equal to plasmon frequency plus some Q corrections. One can elaborate this correction just doing further expansion of the Q, which I didn't do. One can get a spectrum of plasmons, uh, and um, actually, uh, this spectrum tells you that omega squared 
is equal to omega plus one squared plus, if I remember well, three fifths um, of um, Q squared Fermi velocity squared. So these are bosons with a gap which is plasma frequency and spectrum of that sort. Here we have nothing but screen. Namely, let me put this result here. Namely, epsilon q goes to zero. Zero is equal to one plus kappa square over q square, which means that my effective potential, which is four pi e square q square epsilon q zero, is statically screened. This is four pi e square q square plus kappa square, right? I plug in um, the directed constant, and if I take Fourier transform of this potential, I will get E squared over R e to the power minus kappa R. This is famous in kappa potential, which tells us that on the distances larger than Thomas Fermi radius, the system feels screen charge, not bare charge. Uh, the full potential. So, once again, one limit means existence of plasma excitations in the system, while another limit corresponds to static screening of full interactions. If you have questions, ask. Because the last thing I would like to discuss um, is what happens in the remaining five minutes, what happens with the weak singularity of this function at the moment of the score corresponding to uh, twice per moment. We already uh, discussed it that um, for Hubbard model, it may correspond to existence of spin and charge density waves. However, uh, even without strong pull interaction, this leads to very um, interesting effect known as Confridel oscillation. Calculate correctly to get transform of um, effective interaction. To a static case, which is integral over the r e to the power i q r v q divided by epsilon q v. <coughs> Since epsilon depends only on modulus um, uh, Hume, sorry, <coughs> we can take integration of angles, so it's integral Q square dQ over 2 pi Q times integral, which gives me 2 pi integral over pi times integral from minus 1 to 1 e to the power of i q r x dx times v q divided by epsilon q z. So this integral can be easily calculated. This is i q r e to the power i q r minus e to the power minus i q r so this is 2 times over qr <coughs> multiplied sinus qr. So 1 power of q is gone. Um, so it's 1 over 2 pi square 1 over r integral q 
dq and here it's dq sinus qr divided by epsilon dz. So far so good. This is a still exact result. But I don't want to calculate this integral exactly. Anyway, it's not possible to do it for this form of the Linkhart function. What I would like to see here is look at the moment in transverse um, Q close to um, 2kf. If I introduce a variable x equal to Q minus 2kf, I have addition to <coughs> constant in the Linkhart uh, function, so delta phi, which is x logarithm x. 4k f square minus q square, it's 4k, uh, it's 2k f plus q times 2k f minus q, um, and log can be written uh, as a difference of two logs. So therefore, um, if x goes to zero, the only dangerous term is of that sort. But what I see that the function is of course continuous. If x goes to zero, then it is going to zero because x log x goes to zero. So derivative of this function d delta phi over d x is what? Is log x plus one it goes to infinity. But in very weak logarithmical way. The second derivative, d2 delta phi over dx squared, behaves as one by x. So the second derivative has a pole. So when I will calculate this integral, I may calculate it by part. I will calculated by part, um, considering um, this function, let me write it here, as u, and this is dv. What we will give me first of all, I will write minus 1 over r square q v q over epsilon v0 times cosine qr from uh, 0 to infinity um, at q0 and q equal to infinity. Uh, but you see that in both limits, q equal to 0 or q equal to infinity, um, this term is 0. So then it's plus 1 over r squared uh, integral over dq, q dq over epsilon u0 prime times cosine qr. This term remains. So then I will integrate it by part again. So I will get 1 over r cube, q dq over <coughs> epsilon u0 prime times sinus qr uh, 0 infinity minus 1 over r cube integral over dq, q dq over epsilon u0 double prime times <coughs> but you see here I already have something because second derivative of this term will be proportional to second derivative of this dielectric constant which gives me all so at the end of the day I will get this Friedel oscillation which will produce me uh, cosine 2k at r divided by r this is the same as RKQY interaction, which we have already discussed, <coughs> which tells me that if I put 
charged impurity into uh, electron gas, and charged impurity means it is uh, interacting uh, with electrons through Coulomb interaction, I will get, we'll have oscillations of the density, oscillations of the density, so there will be areas of negative density, positive density, um, and um, actually this is density function of R. Um, the charge will be redistributed um, such a way. Um, so there will be charge and purity. So there will be areas of negative, positive density, and so on and so forth. Uh, So this is known as predial oscillations. And these predial oscillations, as I said, come due to weak singularity of the dielectric function um, at the moment of transverse uh, corresponding to twice as a Finally, what did we learn today? We discussed the response function um, of um, the electron gas with a cool interaction. Um, namely, we discussed what to induce charge in the system if you, for example, uh, insert some external charge into it. Um, uh, we discussed what's the electric function, which is response function to uh, inserted um, external charge is. And we found several different conclusions corresponding to absence of screening at, for short times at short distances corresponding to um, existence of screening with a screening radius um, which is inversely proportional to square root of the electron density for um, the distances larger than that. Um, so the screen potential um, is um, uh, given by Yukar form. And we also uh, obtain existence of density oscillations um, which are associated um, with the momentum transfer corresponding to uh, double of thermal momentum. Um, and all this is just a um, consequence of correct solution of Maxwell equation, which we managed to do in one and a half hour. OK. I'm done for today. Questions? In our calculation, probably you said that we begin with uh, static <coughs> potential. But uh, in our calculation, everything depends on T. So no, no, we didn't say static potential. I introduced potential, uh, V external, if you like, uh, which was V e to the power I Q R minus I omega T. Uh, yes, so the, another important is uh, current. Actually, um, this is a good question, whether there are currents. Um, but first of all, I uh, suppose the system is neutral. Uh, so there are no net currents from left to right. Um, then the system is uh, in equilibrium. Um, and I also assume that there are charge uh, distributions um, in, in the system. Um, uh, but um, You may say that uh, there is a row dot which is a current. Um, but of course, uh, there is also, also continuity equation which tells me that uh, row dot plus diver divergence uh, uh, of J um, is equal to zero. So maybe I um, remove it. Um, well, um, the answer is um, that, of course, I use time-dependent perturbation. Um, uh, that's uh, correct. But this time-dependent perturbation rather resulted to the fact that I inserted some charge free impurity and allowed it to oscillate uh, slightly, which uh, doesn't uh, lead me to any uh, macroscopic current um, in the um, from left side sample to the right side of the sample. 
with the statement of problem. Of course, the statement will be different if I put some potential to the right and some potential to the left, which will be time dependent in the current ones. So the assumption is actually uh, that if I average uh, my fluctuations of impurity on the short distances, I will get zero net current, uh, because phases are random and current is the gradient of phase. Where, well, I average phases, I will get zero net current. So there's a strong um, uh, restriction on Q and O Yes. Uh, well, basically, you see that I uh, consider it uh, both Q and omega very small, um, uh, but uh, putting the limit how I take small Q and small omega in different ways. So what I take zero first. But of course, as I said, I'm interested in long wave response, which means small Q, and in uh, long time responses, uh, which means uh, small omega. But you are right, fluctuation for the short time can produce some uh, microscopic currents which then need to be averaged to zero. Okay, so till tomorrow, and tomorrow we discuss weakened uh, strong localization um, in uh, disorder systems. I will update the home page before my list, you will get syllabus on the home page. And also I will try to link all materials to the home page. Just uh, uh, check it time to time. So if not, I will do it um, after exam. Or just bring back and come back. Um, um, with a uh, with a gap, 
EG. This is a typical behavior from, from small gap semiconductors uh, or insulators. And we can repeat the calculations um, uh, for that sort, um, starting with the play weights, because this is conduction band, this, this is conduction band, this is wireless band, and we arrive at this. Uh, there is no Fermi surface. Um, in, in that case, we will uh, integrate our whole uh, field bands. Um, yeah. and, um, Include the band factor. Yeah. 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 So then, this is what we uh, can get. This is what we will get for polarizability. So the message is that for metals, is that sort of insulators. This is this one, and this is a dramatic difference. In one case, directly function diverges at small few, or in another case, it just remains constant. Okay. Okay, let's wait until this group meeting. Uh, I'm still, you know, I'm still in process of uh, working out uh, of the course, uh, but don't worry. Just very busy with all this stuff. So you're talking about the next time you travel to Cameroon? Yes, yes, I travel to Cameroon. Oh, I, I will give lectures there, uh, quite many lectures. Um, I'm going to visit. Um, uh, first I arrive to Guala, uh, then uh, with my colleague we go to Junk, and then, uh, you know Junk. Lukong Cornelius Pai, uh, uh, Professor Pai? Pai. Lukong Cornelius Pai. Yes. yes. Cornelius. Um, uh, I will be lecturing in Kuala Mine, this is Bambili, uh, um, and then I go to Uganda for PhD defense of two students. Uh, so, hmm? Where? Bambili or? No, I, I, I go to Yawanda too, Yawanda. Oh, okay, Yawanda. Uh, uh, no, uh, one. One, uh, University One, yes. Um, so, it's really it's really it's really um, it's, um, Bonk, uh, one name is Javert, I think, and another one is very complicated. Uh, uh, it's University of uh, Yawanda One. Mechanic or Science Material I don't know. I'm unaware about any. Okay. It will be my first visit to Cameroon. I have never been there. Okay. And where I'm from, which place, which the town? The only one. Ah. The only one. The mechanic. Mm -hmm. Because we have all the small ah. laboratories, material sciences, atomic mm -hmm. So the program is very tough. I mean, I'm going to visit four cities okay. and uh, give something like six lectures wow. in total. That's very tough. And Bambi, I am the one, and Chang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Duala. Duala. Okay. In 10 days, it's quite a lot. OK, it's quite two. Yeah. Two. OK, okay good. Uh, hope, um, good. Good travel. Thank you very much. Okay.